The sparrow's not worried about tomorrow or the troubles to come. The lily's not thinking about the seasons, the drought or the flood. The tree that's planted by the water isn't phased by the fire. So why should I be? Cause you take good care of me. Good morning, church. I hope you're having a blessed day today. Today we are going in to the book of Ephesians, and we're going to continue one more day talking about the rest of God. We're going to read Ephesians 2, verses 8 until verses 10, and we're just going to talk for just a little bit about this last final understanding to try to grasp the rest of God. This will be our fifth teaching this week on the rest of God. And I pray that these lessons have been blessing you. They have been blessing me to be able to preach them. So I pray it's been blessing you. But it's so important to remember that there is physical rest, number one, actually taking a day off, taking a break. But then two, there is the spiritual rest and the fact that it's already done. The price is already paid. The sacrifice is already made. Access has already been granted into the things of God. And we have to rest in the fact that Jesus has already paid the price. And when we get to a point where we begin to rest in what God has already done for us, and we are not trying to earn the things of God, then we enter into that rest. See, it's in our works that we're trying to earn, that we end up striving with ourselves on the inside. We strive with God. We frustrate grace. We have these moments of burnout and exhaustion and tired. And I hear it all the time. People say, I'm just tired. I don't want to do it anymore. And I hear those types of phrases from people that are actually doing the will of God. And they say, I just don't understand. And I said, it's it's very simple. You're not resting. There is a rest that remains for the people of God. And you must enter into that rest to understand that it's already done. It's already done. So let's go ahead and pray. And then I want to jump right into this. But before we do, I just want to say one thing. If you have not taken our BSM discipleship curriculum, there are six weeks in that curriculum that is grace and faith and the balance of the two. And I encourage you to go and take that. We have many daily teachings and many Sunday services on faith, the progression of faith, grace, the balance of the two, how to operate in both. And that's a very important thing to understand. We're going to barely go over it today. This is going to be such a brief summary because we're only taking one daily teaching this week on this subject. But it's so important to understand. I encourage you to go and find all of the additional resources on our website. There is a search bar on the website. If you just search grace or you search faith, it will pull up all of the different information that we have. We have many, many teachings on this subject, but it's important to understand this because if you're going to walk in the true rest of God and you're going to live in the rest of God, this is number one primary importance is understanding the new covenant And the fact that it's already done, that it's given by grace and it's received by faith and understanding the two. Father, I thank you. I pray you bless everybody under the sound of my voice. Let the word become wisdom revelation in the knowledge of your son. Spiritual seed sown, producing in our body, mind, will, and emotion, transforming us by the renewing of our mind, conforming us to the image of Christ, growing us up in the measure and the stature of the fullness of Christ. God, we love you and we thank you in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Ephesians chapter 2, I'm going to start in verse 8. For by grace are you saved through faith, and that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus unto good works, which God hath before ordained that we should walk in them. Now, I'm going to go ahead and answer the number one question that comes up every time we deal with grace 
or faith or the balance of grace and faith, the progression of faith, the law of faith, any of these subjects, there's always one question that comes up. If we live by faith, does that mean we don't have to do works? See, there's this misunderstanding in the body of Christ that there is works and that there is faith and the two are in direct contradiction to each other and that you can't live in both. See, faith is not the absence of works. Faith is the belief. It is the reception of promise before the work not after see to really understand the new covenant or the difference between the old and the new covenant is to look at them together and to look at what they said see in a, in exodus chapter 19 when god gave the law unto moses he said if you will do this then you will become a peculiar people unto me that what you do determines what you receive and who you become See, that's the old covenant. The old covenant is my works or my actions decide what I receive and who I become. In the new covenant, what I receive and who I have became now determines what I do. It's flipped. See, in the old covenant, you work, then you receive. In the new covenant, you receive, then you work. See, the work is not gone. It's just in a different position in the process. See, this is what most people don't understand about the new covenant. And it's very easy to get caught in both of the traps on either side of both grace and faith. People get into the grace side of the equation, but then they go outside the boundaries. And when they do that, they live in a point where they say, oh, it's all by grace and there's no work that needs to be done. See, that's one aspect of the grace of God in which people get outside the boundaries. See, the Bible says that the word of God is the boundary. It's, it's what God says establishes the boundary lines, and we are to live in between the boundaries. And the boundaries is the word of God. The word of God gives the, what you could say is that, that solid yellow line on the side of the road that if you cross that, you're going to end up in the ditch. You know, it's the it's the solid lines on either side that says don't cross. Otherwise, you're going to be in the ditch. And one side is the grace side. And it says don't cross the boundary line that just because there's grace doesn't mean you can't work. So that's one deception. The other boundary line is on the side of faith where people get so into faith that they think I must work. And that's how I receive the things of God. My actions, even if I say it's in faith, but my actions determine the reception of the promise and you're outside the boundary. See, your actions are not what receives from God. Your actions don't make you earn the things of God. And the things of God, when they are received, demand an action. See, it's not one or the other you have to have this combination and you have to balance the two and you have to live in both. You have to live in grace and in faith at the same time in a balance and you have to keep them in order. So let's explain very clearly what Ephesians chapter two says so you can understand how grace and how faith work together, not separate, but together and what it does in the life of the believer. Inside of the new covenant, grace, which we could simply say grace is God's gifts. It's God's part. It's God's promises. It's grace is the rewards of God. That is a very simple definition. But if you look up the word charis inside of the Greek concordance and you look at the definition, it is a recompense or a reward. Now, people think, well, I, I thought you can't earn it. If it's a reward, you must earn it. I don't have time to go into all of this today. But grace was earned. It was paid for, but it was paid for by Jesus. Jesus paid the price and it was due unto him all of the gifts of God because he earned it. That's why it's grace. Grace is Jesus's reward for how he lived. And Jesus says, I will give you my rewards all of the grace of God that I paid for, I will give it to you 
if you will make me Lord and put your faith in me. So everything I have earned from God and your faith come together, and that's how you receive all of the things of God. Now, what is faith? Faith is connection to God. That's what faith is. Faith is your connection to God. How are you connected to God? By what Jesus did on the cross. See, Jesus paid the price that by his blood you may be reconciled unto the Father. So all of the rewards, they belong to Jesus. Jesus earned all of them. The connection to God also belongs to Jesus because that's his blood. And he gives us both his rewards and his connection to the Father in his blood. See, when you get born again and you receive the infilling of the Holy Ghost and the Holy Ghost comes and dwells inside of you and you get born again and you receive all the fullness of the Godhead dwelling inside of you bodily because the same spirit that was in Christ Jesus becomes in you, and he who is joined to the Lord is one spirit, one with the exception of another, meaning that there's only one. There's not your spirit and the Holy Spirit. They come together and it becomes one. You are sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise, and you become God on the inside. One third of you wall-to-wall -wall Holy Ghost. You are God on the inside in your spirit because there's no longer your spirit and God's spirit. It's one spirit. He was joined to the Lord as one spirit. So on the inside of you, you are God at the spirit. And you are fully connected to God through faith, which means you fully receive the grace of God because it's the rewards given unto somebody that is connected to God, and it's all done by Jesus. See, the thing is, you couldn't earn any of the process. Let me say this. In Ephesians chapter 2, when we look at grace through faith, not of works, it's not, it's not of yourself, not of works, lest any man should boast, so many times we put the focus on not of works being on the side of grace meaning that you don't earn the grace of God. That is 100% true. But you also don't earn the faith of God. That's also true. See, so many times when we look at Ephesians chapter 2, what we focus on, it's not of works lest any man should boast, talking about the grace part of this. But not of works lest any man should boast is the faith part of this also. You can't earn the faith. See, so many times when we talk about faith and living by faith, we think that we grow in faith, but we don't. And we think that we grow in faith by what we do. If I read my Bible more, if I pray more, if I tithe more, and we try to grow in faith by what we do, but you don't actually grow in faith. Ephes uh, Galatians chapter two, we read this a couple days ago. Uh, it says, I am crucified with Christ, nevertheless I live. Nevertheless, I live, yet not I, but Christ liveth in me, and the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God. I live by the faith of Him, His faith. See, you have the measure of faith. There's only one. You have 100% faith because you are 100% connected to God. You can't be any less connected to God if you're born again. Whether you're one day saved, one hour saved, or 30 years saved, everybody's connected to God at the same level because the Spirit of God lives inside of you. We're all connected at the same degree, 100%, same quality and same quantity. So there's no difference in the amount of faith I have versus the amount of faith you have. So not only is grace, what we, what we think about is the grace of God, prosperity, healing, deliverance, all of the rewards of God. What also is a reward of God is the faith that lives on the inside of you, your connection to God. So here's something I want you to just take a moment to think about. And I know I'm saying a lot of things today and we could unpack each one of these truths for an hour at a time to really understand this. That's why we have a curriculum on this. I probably got 200 teachings on this subject, maybe, maybe more. We have, I mean, we have over 1200 teachings on our website. We probably have at least 200 on this one specific subject. There's so much to understand and it's a very simple understanding, but it's so complicated for most believers and it, it, it should not be complicated, but people make it complicated. 
So I'm just going to say this very, very clearly. The grace of God in your life, the faith that you have, they are both not earned by your works. You can't earn the grace. You can't earn the faith. You can't work for the grace of God. You can't work for the faith of the Son of God. It's all given to you freely, both grace and faith. See, that's something that's so important when it comes to resting in God, is that you can't earn the grace of God and you can't earn the faith of the Son of God. And you have both. You have both of those things on the inside of you. Connection to God at 100%. The rewards of God at 100%. You have all of it right now. And you can't earn any of it. See, what we see so often, and this is the this is the part that people don't rest in. It's why people can't rest in God. Or they can't figure out how to rest in God. Because they do believe that the things of God are received freely. Meaning healing, deliverance, prosperity, financial provision. Hearing the voice of God, revelation, you know, they believe that those things cannot be earned by God. So they may rest in a certain area, but there's the other side that they don't rest in where they try to earn the faith to receive those promises. Okay, well, I can't earn the promise, so I'll earn the faith to receive the promise. And the way they do this is they try to read more. They try to study the Bible more, and that's how I will earn faith. Now, let me just say this. In Romans chapter 10, it says, faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. And and so many people say, well, that means I need to do more reading, and then I'll get more faith. No, you have all the faith. So what does it mean faith comes by hearing? You understand and learn more about what you already have the more you hear it. And I use this example all the time. I said, if I gave you a brand new car and said, the car is yours, the very first thing you're gonna know is the car is yours. But if you get in a brand new car nowadays, do you know how to turn it on? Sometimes you have to push the brake. Sometimes you have to turn a key. There's many different ways to turn on cars nowadays. Sometimes you just get in the car and the car turns on. So how do you turn the car on? How do you shift it into gear? Does it have a gear? What? How does that work? Do you know how to turn the radio on? I mean, that's a simple one, but I've been in some new cars that it's almost impossible to try to figure out how to turn the radio on. Well, we spent 30 minutes in a car that's not even a brand new car, and we couldn't figure out how to connect the phone to the radio. So, I mean, there's so many different things that are the complex things in cars nowadays. So what do you do? Well, you get out the owner's manual and you read and it says, turn this button, press this button, and you learn what you already have. You're not getting any more. You're just learning about what you have already. The same thing with faith. You already have 100% faith. But when you read the Bible, you grow in understanding what you already have. You grow in understanding the faith you have. You don't actually get more. And that's a very important thing to understand because people try to work to earn more faith even if they're not trying to work to earn the grace. And both sides are deception. Both sides are ditches. Because if you're trying to work to earn anything of God, grace or faith, you've missed it and you're not resting. See, one thing I know is that I don't earn any of the things of God. If I don't pray, or if I don't read, or if I do read, or if I do pray, it doesn't dictate how much I have. Now, my experience, what I know will definitely change based on how I read, what I understand, what I know. But it's not changing the quantity or the quality. It's just changing my experience of it. So... When you understand that you don't work to earn anything of God, grace or faith, you start resting in the fact it's already done. It's already been given. But now you have to understand, well, what? why is there so many passages on the New Testament about works? See, we were created for good works. We were created in Christ Jesus unto good works. I mean, it's very clear. It's the next verse. But I thought you said we don't do works 
what we do do works. So how do you how, how do you balance all of this together? My works do not earn grace or faith, either one. I don't earn any of it. But once I receive and once I know what I have, it will compel me to do work. See, I don't earn healing. But because I know it's freely been given unto me, I go and pray for people. When I pray for people, I'm not working and then God's moving. God's already provided healing. All I'm doing is giving what God has already gave. See, my works are in response to God. I'll say this very simply. God does not respond to you. If you think that what I'm doing, God is going to respond to me, you've already missed it. God does not respond to us. We respond to God. See, if you have already been given something and then you do something, that work is in response. It's not because. Let me give you an example. If somebody says, if you mow my lawn, I'm going to give you $10. And you're like, okay. So you go and you do something to earn the money. But if you're walking down the sidewalk and somebody comes up to you and they says, hey, I want to give you $100. And they put $100 in your hand. And you say, what is this for? I love you. Just wanted to give you something. And you see that their yard needs to be cut. And then you go and cut their yard. You're not cutting their yard to earn that hundred. You're doing the yard cutting in response to what they gave you. They gave you something freely. And then you responded in gratitude back to them. The same with the Lord. That is the entire understanding of the new covenant. We preach the gospel. We do good works. We give. We tithe. We, we do all of these things for God because God has already given us everything we need. He gave it freely. I didn't earn it. He gave it to me. And because he was so extravagant and giving everything to me, I turn around and give all of my life back to him and everything that I do as a response of thankfulness and gratitude to the Lord. Father, I thank you. Bless everybody under the sound of my voice. In Jesus' name, amen. Church, I love you. God bless you. Have a great day. Like, follow, share, drop us a comment. We will see you tomorrow. Please don't miss it. We're going to have a powerful Sunday service tomorrow. I pray you have a great day, and we will see you tomorrow. The sparrow's not worried about tomorrow. Oh, the troubles to come. The lily's not thinking about the seasons. The drought all. The tree that's planted by the water isn't phased by the fire. So why should I be? Cause you take good care of me. The sun's not worried about the winter, cause soon it will pass. The light's not thinking about the dark.